Hi there, it's Nicole here today, and I'm sharing a mostly one layer detailed Christmas card using Winnie and Walter stamps and a stencil. And I absolutely have been addicted to masking images, kind of a throwback to a, the good old days before we had dies for every single stamp set out there, um, it seems like, and there's no white lines. You can create seamless designs just with a little masking. I've already kind of pre-done a little bit of my masking here. I am using the Happy Owlidays stamp set from Winnie and Walter. Adorable, fantastic owl and bird images. Greetings, there's a branch, there's strings of lights, there's ornaments. And what I did was stamped my owls first masked them with some masking paper, stamped the branch, masked it with masking paper, everything really except for the pine needles kind of there at the end. And then I stamped the ornaments. Now I really kind of wish I would have stamped the ornaments first, but it's hard to tell where they go in this particular design. Um, or I could have stamped them after I stamped the branch, but before I masked it would have been best because I masked the branch and then stamped the ornaments hanging from it, but anywhere there's the mask, I'm losing that line. However, it's an easy, easy fix, and I'm gonna have to trace over parts of the image anyway because I'm inking over it and it's gonna kind of blur the images just a little bit, or not blur them, but um, mute them. So I will show you how I fix that. Then instead of stamping my sentiment with black ink, I'm gonna stamp that with Versamark ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. This is gonna give me some embossed resist and help my sentiment blend more into the background, keeping the focal point on these darling owls, that branch and these really cute hanging ornaments. Before I remove any masks, I'm gonna ink up this background. And this has been one of my favorite color combinations for holiday cards this season, and that's Faded Jeans and Salty Ocean Distress Oxide inks. I like Distress Oxide inks for your traditional, like for example, I'm using Nina Smooth White cardstock, heavyweight cardstock, because they're more forgiving than a traditional Distress ink. A lot of times I really like to use Distress inks with a specialty cardstock or watercolor cardstock because they blend so much smoother. Distress oxides don't really have that same problem. They're going to blend a lot easier on a traditional cardstock. And you can see I'm not getting my those foam ink blending tool marks in this or anything like that and I'm still getting a beautiful blend. So I'm a huge fan of the Distress Oxides on traditional cardstock. The greeting embossed resist the, these inks beautifully. I just wanna make sure I have a nice seamless transition from the uh, dark blue to the light blue. And then I wanna buff off any ink that is maybe sitting on top of the stamped image. I'm gonna spritz this background with water from a Distress Sprayer to add to that snowy kind of scene in the background. I'll also be adding some more snow on top of this. Now, you could do this one of two ways. You could remove your masks, color in your images, and then stencil on top, or you could do what I'm doing and I'm gonna stencil first. I don't really want any of these white snowflakes or falling snow on top of my owls per se or any of the rest of my coloring. Um, I really want it to stay in the forefront, I guess. So I'm gonna stencil first, but depending on what you like, you can do it either way. I'm using white embossing paste through the Big Bang Circle stencil. So it's not really falling snow, but I think it makes fantastic falling snow and a pretty nice thin layer here. I'm not um, really heaping it on. I wanna keep it fairly flat. This card has tons of dimension but it's a fairly flat card. The only place that I tried to keep the embossing paste kind of free from is the greeting. And there was a couple of places where I did get some of the embossing paste 
before it dries and really even after you could probably scrape it off if you needed to but before it dries it's really easy to remove so what I'm gonna do is take I think I just took the tip of some scissors and I'm gonna remove the little bit of it here that's over the S in Christmas and that's gonna look a lot better then I let this sit and dry probably for 30 minutes I had to run and get my son from school and um, that took just a little bit and so when I came home my embossing paste was completely dry and I can carefully peel off all of the masks from all of my images I think it would really be fun to make coloring sheets like this as well um, every time I mask like this I think wouldn't it be fun to send a card that someone else could color and finish um, just a fun idea there because once you've masked it and have this awesome background it looks really cool now the pine needles really disappeared into the inking so I'm taking a green Copic marker and going over them plus that adds a nice little touch of color to that branch then I'm going to color in the branch itself the colors I'm using are shown across the bottom of the screen here I used YG 99 for the greenery and then E 55 and 57 for the branch and it's like watching a picture come to life once you start coloring this in. But I just love that it's all a single layer. This is completely flat. It's gonna be really easy to mail, but it looks like it has tons of dimension because there's so much going on here. I'm gonna speed through the coloring. However, I did leave it all in. Um, I know a lot of you like to watch the coloring, like to reference the colors that are being used. So I have listed what I'm coloring and then the Copic marker numbers. Depending on what medium you're coloring, maybe you're using a different kind of alcohol ink marker, or if you wanted to use Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers, I would do the same thing that I did here, but I would change that to Bristol Smooth cardstock for my base. The ink blending is gonna be beautiful. Everything will work just the same, but the paper works with the zigs so much better. This paper, the Nina paper, you could use colored pencils and color all of your images in with colored pencils if you wanted to. Um, you could do the same design and use distress markers or watercolors if you used watercolor paper as your base so simply by changing your paper choice and coloring medium to whatever you like but basic technique is all the same i love 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 these owls i think they are the cutest thing um i have loved these i believe it came out I want to say last year in 2016 I believe that's right um, and I just hadn't picked it up and so I was thrilled to get the chance to create with this stamp set because I think these are just the most darling images and I love that they're not super teeny tiny they are a nice size this is an A2 sized piece of paper I'm coloring on and you can see the size of them. And there are, there's another individual bird, there's an individual owl, there's a little trio of little smaller owls, um, and then there's like a turtle dove. And I think they are just the cutest bird images. I really love them. I also love that you can customize the branch and your images. If you don't wanna hang ornaments or you don't wanna hang this many ornaments, it's super easy to customize it and hang whatever you want. There's a candy cane that I think would look awesome hung over the branch. Instead of the branch, you could do the string of lights. Do a couple strings of lights and have uh, different birds on each string. There's different greetings. There's several greetings in this. There's also a tree image so if you wanted to do a border along the bottom with some trees i think that would be cool just lots of fun things you can do now i am using a black marker to trace over those lines and to extend the strings of the ornaments hanging from that branch like i was talking about earlier plus you can see in the ornaments i've not colored yet how 
muted those are because of the ink over the top of that. So going over it really draws them back out and adds lots of interest to them. Pine cones are just some shades of brown that I've already used. I'm also adding detail to the ornaments with a Stardust glitter pin. It's going to add a nice little bit of glitter to these. And then once I am completely finished with my card, I'm going to go over several of the different elements of this card with glossy accents. And I think it adds a really awesome finishing touch, plus keeps to that single layer card, but adds again, adds dimension and interest to the design. I kept my ornaments in a single color palette. In fact, I kept the whole card to a pretty simple, traditional color palette. Red and white ornaments, one ornament that I kept with just some light grays to keep it kind of white and sparkly. Um, the little yellow star was the only little touch of yellow there. The Santa hat and the scarf are both red. However, I took a black pin, went in and added that the fringe detail on the scarf, just like I did on the ornaments to really help draw that out and add that interest in detail. One of my favorite things to do for scarves especially, I don't know why, but I love to do this with scarves, is either add a plaid detail to them or a polka dot. And I opted for polka dot here today. So I'll take a white pin, a white opaque pin, and add some little polka dots all over it. And it adds a lot of interest, it's super fun, and kind of dresses up the scarf and makes it your own. I'll do that here in a little bit. I'll go ahead and color my other owl. I kept them both very neutral, one in shades of more brown and one in warm grays. That just adds a little bit of interest to these. So they're not exactly the same. I think it would be fun. I didn't do it on this card, but I think it would be fun to take a fine tip black pin and add some eyelashes to one of them. Kind of like little lovebirds type of thing. Um, I think that would be really cute as well. I love how these colors look against that blue sky. So, so pretty. Just a little bit more coloring here and then we'll add some finishing details and get this card put on a card base. Now I'm gonna take a white opaque pen and I'm gonna add some feather detail to the stomachs of the birds. On the gray bird, I kept it to just white and then I went in and I'm adding that polka dot detail that I was talking about earlier. And you can see that adds a lot to the image. It's really fun. Make sure and do the whole scarf. Then for my other owl, I'm gonna take some brown markers first and add the detail. I felt like white kind of just dis would disappear into it. So I went in with browns first and I felt like that was a little too harsh, the E44. So I'm gonna go in with E43 and that's gonna blend them out a little bit. And then I'll t go over that with my white opaque pen. And it was still a little harsh. I went over it again with E40, um, just kind of blending it out. And I love that. That looks great. Adds a nice detail to it. Around the whole card, I decided I wanted it to have a little bit of a frame or mat. So I'm going to trim off an eighth of an inch from all four sides to keep that greeting centered. And then I will mount this on a white top fold card base. I like to usually just put my adhesive right on the card base itself and take the panel to that. And you can see that little white border frames up the scene beautifully. And then finishing up the card, I'm gonna take some glossy accents. I have a fine tip applicator on my glossy accents. I'm going to go on the noses and the feet of the owls and then completely cover all of the hanging ornaments here. It's going to give them a great glossy shiny finish. I'm taking my straight pin and trying to pop some of those bubbles. Sometimes it's easier than others to get those to pop. Go over all of these 
it's pretty much dry within 30 minutes or so. Glossy Accents dries nice and fast, which is fantastic for things like this. And that will finish up my Christmas almost one layer card with lots of detail. Thanks for joining me today for this holiday card featuring Winnie and Walter stamps and stencils. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Christmas themed stamps and dies that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.